MovieWeb.com. In their town, there is no law to follow. Partners in crime, right? Only a code to live by. To the three Bs. Bikes. Beer. And the Lee. <laughs> now, is it true that you sort of created your own look for this character? I mean, you're the one that kind of brought the tuxedo in, right? Who told you that? The press notes I read last night told me that before I saw the movie. It's true. I have no one to blame but myself. Uh, early on when I read the script, I, I wanted to come up with something that would be kind of different. You know, I mean, the last thing you want to do when you're making a motorcycle picture is have it be predictable. The last thing you want to do as a bad guy is be pretentious. And so I figured if I could come up with something that was going to be a little bit different, then I uh, had enough time to think about it, believe me, because Larry had been talking about this movie for about two years. And I thought it would be interesting to wear a tuxedo. I'd never seen anybody wear a tuxedo in a biker picture before. So I went and asked him, and ultimately it was up to him. But he said, yeah. And I knew that when he said yes to the tux, that we were probably going to have a good time making the movie, because I knew that he was going to let me do my thing. And uh, if you let me do my thing, I'll do a, a good job, you know. Hey, what are those white wings mean? They're for licking a virgin pussy. Red wings for licking a bleeding pussy. And blue and yellow wings for licking a police one. Green wings for licking a pussy with crabs. Purple wings. They're for licking a dead pussy. See that? Pill popping, cunt eating, dope smoking, motherfucker. But you know, in a good way. Now I want to know where this idea of the whole wing tattoo come from. Was that just something Larry it's thought Larry, up on yeah, his that's own? That's the script. That's yeah. The script. And it's, you know, it's like, it, instead of carving, you know, like names of people you've killed or whatever, you know, he done it, he done it in wings. You know, like scalping people, really. You know, Comanche scalps people, and I, you know, I have the tattoo wings. Were there any disgusting ones that you didn't really, that didn't make it into the movie, like a certain color, and they were like, yeah, that's a little too over the top, even for this movie? Um, no, I think the uh, C-U-N-T one was in there. Yeah, it was. Yeah, well, that was that was the one. That, that was, was the like, worst one. I didn't think that would make <laughs> the final cut. Will you tell me about this weapon that you have, this arrow? Harpoon. Thing? Yeah. Now, how did that come about? I mean, how did they go about designing that for you? Well, uh, there was a funny story about that because uh, they wanted to do like a gas gun harpoon gun. You know, because we, we're like, what? We've seen it all. You know, and all the boys have got guns, and you know. And um, I think the Magnificent Seven, the guy had the knife, you know, and stuff like that. Why hasn't been done? A harpoon, a harpoon gun. That, oh, right. So the guy, one of the lads, comes up with it. The, the the prop guy's so brilliant. Right, this is how it works. So we do it. Yeah, great. And then we do a scene, and then we're sitting about. So this has got ten minutes. Give it to the guy. This, that, and the other. To the prop guy. So he's sort of standing there talking. About, it discharges on its own. Right? Yeah. And everyone stood round and it whistles straight through the crowd and just misses one of the producers or one of the, you know, one of the stand-ins or something and it just missed them by like a millimetre. End of story it would have been. Sorry. My finger got stuck. Next time, share a little. So I say, we cut off their heads, we take them with us. I say we just take a few pinkies and <clears throat> call it a day. Husband, we take their stash, torch the trailer, and get the fuck out of here. When you sat down to write the script, you wrote out a complete novel for I this, did. right? I actually, it's it was a novel, um, it was 400 pages, uh, but what I did was, what, each page wasn't complete, and I, I wanted the nothing, it, it, philosophically, it was a, the, the motorcycle movie is nihilistic, 
and I wanted to actually show you how crazy it was when I was writing this thing. <laughs> show you what Quentin Tarantino can make a person do when when you get exhilarated, you know, exhilarated by what Quentin Tarantino was saying to you. Uh, but I, I wanted like negative space on the page uh, to represent the nihilism or the let's say the absence of meaning, so that the presence of meaning, which is in a normal book, it's all. Every uh, page is completely full of words, so so it was 400 pages of uh, a lot of there was a lot of empty space. There was a lot of nothingness on each of the pages. It was a crazy way of doing it because I gave it to Quentin, and um, when he uh, called me, you know, he said we're going to make the greatest motorcycle movie ever after after reading it. So, but he said that one, he said why why because he didn't know that that's what I was going to give him. I, this 400-page thing, and he thought it would be a conventional screenplay. But I, he said, he said, you know, I got. He said that was a little odd at first to get into that the way you wrote it. Uh, but he said I did. He said I know I liked it. I, I, you know, once I got accustomed to what you had done, I got behind it. Okay, but it took a little while for him to get into it. Do you get to say some really sexy things to Pistolero, Pistolero, but yeah, actually is also your director. I mean, what yeah. was that sort of like? I mean, did the tension just break after the scene that he goes, okay, do it this way? Um, I don't know. It was really comfortable. I can't really pinpoint why, but sometimes maybe it's because me and Larry had a relationship before I knew him. He had he had approached me two years before after seeing a screening of one of my movies called Innocent Voices, where I play a complete different character, a mother of three in a shanty town in the middle of the Salvadorian War. And God knows why, but he approached me and said, hey, I think this would be really right for you. So we developed a relationship for two years. And he talked to me about this project, you know, over a couple of years, a couple of times. So when I stepped into this world and we started working together, there was already a great level of trust. So there was very little to be worked out as we went. More this way, more that way. Great, do it again. Okay, done, moving on. In a three-week shoot, you don't get five takes to try all different things. You get one or two and you better just get it right there. And that's it. So. He just allowed us, the best thing he did with me was just I'll give me the confidence and allow me to do what I wanted to do. <laughs> Why'd you hit me with that bottle? Over a beer. What do you got? What do you want? Around here. We drink. American beer! American it is. Now you've ridden a lot of bikes before this, and I want to ask this because Eric's not here, but he had to ride this Indian, and those right. are pretty difficult to learn how to maneuver when you've never been on a bike. It's a very before, confusing right? bike to, to ride, and you know, God bless him because he didn't wasn't really a motorcycle guy, and and yet he's given his part in a motorcycle movie, so he kind of had to take a a pretty fast course in bike riding, and uh, to his credit, you know, he did. He learned how to ride it, and he did a good job. I'd been riding since I was 10 years old, so uh, I, um, it was all fun for me. So you're pretty familiar with that type of bike and what the well, clutch sure. has. Well, sure, everything's on the wrong side, and yeah. it's kind of goofy, and uh, you know, Dennis had to ride one, too. His had a sidecar on it. And you know, he's 71 years old, and he's you know, <laughs> running circles around everybody else, so uh, if you're gonna do a biker movie, I suppose you better know how to ride one. <laughs> It's not something they can CGI. Michael Madsen, Vinnie Jones, with David Carradine and Dennis Hopper. I actually felt that one. Quentin Tarantino presents Hell Ride, written and directed by Larry Bishop.